Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Peretti, and I'd like to welcome you as we discuss interprofessional practice, or IPP, as it relates to the delivery of early intervention services. According to ASH's definition, IPP occurs when multiple service providers from different professional backgrounds provide comprehensive services by working with individuals and their families, caregivers, and communities to deliver the highest quality of care across healthcare and educational settings. When a parent has a child who's a child with developmental disabilities or at risk for developmental delay, then we're going to look at a team of professionals, a team of experts that will be able to assess the child and then determine if the child would qualify for services with an early intervention program. Early intervention teams consist of your, your parent, uh, your speech pathologist, your OT, PT, a pediatrician, a social worker and a psychologist, and you may also have members from the Early Start program, case coordinators. But there usually is a leader um, from that team who is the main interaction person with the family. And then that main person does the interventions that are more um, more than just speech and language. However, they're regularly in contact with the other service providers and updating those goals for the child on a regular basis. And if there's a concern that happens in the home, the caregivers need to feel confident discussing it with the speech language pathologist so that um, they know that the SLP is gonna go back to the other providers and get the information and bring it back to the family. I absolutely appreciate early interventionists that touch the child first because what I find in, in dealing with the entire team as a speech therapist, I might not be the first person to make contact with the child. However, I can call up a team member and say, hey, what does this child like? What are the dislikes? By using an IPP team approach, parents of children with communication impairments are involved in assessment and intervention planning and provision. I think the parent is that one constant for the child. And the IPP team is, is everything added. The parent is part of the team. That's what makes early intervention so special, is because parents are equal partners with the professionals and have a very important role in the decision-making of the team. The team is benefiting the parents and caregivers. What I like to say is we'll provide or we'll guide. So we're either gonna provide services for the family to help them with the development of their child. And the child really learns the best within the context of their family. So we want to include the family in as many things as we're doing because that's how children, the young children are learning. And so this benefits the parents because now they see what they can do at home. Parents are essential in early intervention. Uh, Parents are the children's very first teacher and remain that in as a component of early intervention. That's a value that we base our services on. And so parents can provide all kinds of information about their children. They can discuss their days, um, including the families in doing the intervention um, has been demonstrated to have great outcomes for the children. The IPP team model for inter early intervention is so important for families and parents because they are hearing the same message from a number of professionals and they're hearing consistency and continuity. So when they see that we have an entire professional team working and talking and collaborating and meeting and making adjustments, it's like, whoa, it's gonna be fine. And that gives, the biggest thing is hope. How different are the daily activities that exist for IPP in early intervention? When we talk about early intervention, not all the teams are gonna look the same. And that's because not all early intervention needs are the same. It's kind of, I would say, on a continuum in regards to our practice and the population that we serve. However, that said, we're going to have several different teams. For the early intervention system, for the birth to three, a lot of times we get the referrals directly from the physician, especially when they come right out of NICU with a known complex etiology. Now, the speech pathologist gets brought in and we do an eval. Well, that's the starting point. We are only as good as the information that's provided to us. So it behooves the speech pathologist to reach out and to research to figure out what's going on with the little one. 
For me personally, that means I pick up the phone after I complete my eval and write up my report and contact a special care or a special needs care coordinating nurse and say, these are the signs and symptoms that I see and I think the child needs these referrals. And then we work together to tease out the specialist that that little one needs to follow up with. It's really very interesting having an interdisciplinary team because each person comes to the table with their own expertise and we value one another's opinions and judgments and professionalism. And the parent is part of the team. That's what makes early intervention so special is because parents are equal partners with the professionals and have a very important role in the decision making of the team. So it's critical that I work collaboratively with the physicians and with the um, special needs care nurse in order to get that information. But as that information trickles in, that better shapes that medically fragile child's plan of care. To bring that information and to be part of that process with the families, they are so grateful for the advocacy for their child because they appreciate that somebody's willing to go to bat for them. Health service professionals can aid families in navigating the process of acquiring and implementing services for their child. There usually is a leader um, from that team who is the main interaction person with the family. And then that main person does the interventions that are more um, more than just speech and language, particularly if the SLP is the primary service provider, they are responsible for um, helping implement interventions maybe for motor or more educational based interventions. However, they're regularly in contact with the other service providers and updating those goals for the child on a regular basis. And if there's a concern that happens in the home, the caregivers need to feel confident discussing it with the speech language pathologist so that um, they know that the SLP is going to go back to the other providers and get the information and bring it back to the family. So it really has to be a comfortable and um, trusting relationship um, with the whoever that primary service provider is in the home. Be the source of change, advocate, reach out, work collaboratively with your professional partners. It's Great things can happen.